All pre-meds have the same questions, but most get the wrong answers. They're often oversimplified or straight up wrong. 10 years ago, I started my journey as a freshman at UCLA. And today I'm giving you the truth to important questions I wish I had answers to when I was in your shoes. Some answers will help you sleep better, but others may make you upset, fair warning. What's something you wish every pre-med knew before applying? I wish more pre-meds knew that getting into medical school is not a race. And actually, interestingly, it's a test of character. Every year, I see pre-meds who take the MCAT late into the cycle and they tunnel vision into submitting. They feel pressure to get their writing in on time and ultimately what they submit is not as good as it could have been. And then finally, after pressing on the gas for three, six, seven months, submitting the primary, submitting the secondaries, all that stress and anxiety go away for a little bit. But then after it builds back up, when they've learned they have zero acceptances and they have to reapply and they've done nothing that year to really change their application. Being a doctor is a huge test of humility. Just today, I was on the phone with a patient who was screaming at me, saying I was incompetent, saying I should go back to practicing on cadavers, saying that if I messed up, she'd come after me. And at the end of the day, it takes a ton of character to swallow your pride and know what you stand for and to treat that patient and the next patient to the best of your ability, even if they frankly hate you. Medical school admissions is in a way also a test of character. It asks you to acknowledge that time pressure from your parents, that time pressure from your peers also applying to medical school, to swallow that hit to your identity and ego if you push back another year. It asks you to handle all of that with grace and still make the right decision for yourself. Apply only when you're truly ready because medical school admissions is not a race. And everyone thinks medical school admissions is just a series of checking boxes and milestones. But underneath it all, there is meaning. Here's another example. If my GPA trends upward after a rough start, do schools treat that positively? Absolutely here, especially if that trend is real and sustained. Transition in college is a new stressful experience and not everyone hits the ground running. And also life sometimes just happens. But ultimately med schools do want to know who they are getting. If freshman Mikey struggled in class, but sophomore and junior year Mike figured it out, med schools have full confidence that that's the Mike they're going to get in that medical school. So the growth, the learning from your mistakes, all of that just makes a more human experience. You're not a perfect medical school candidate when you're an 18 year old freshman and you shouldn't be. You make mistakes, but over those three to five years, you build and make real impact on your campus and your surrounding community. Adcoms resonate with that body of work because that's a normal human trajectory. Don't get fooled thinking you have to be perfect on day one. And when you ultimately apply, take a step back and take a look at all that you've accomplished. I think that's worth celebrating. You're a different, better person than you were years ago. But let's say even with an upward trend, your stats still aren't perfect. Does that mean you have no chance? Not necessarily because there's always one thing that can earn you a white coat. Remember that all these answers lead to a strong application and there are no stronger applications than ones that actually got accepted to medical school. We have eight full AMCAS applications that got into schools like UCLA and UCSF. And in fact, my own application is on there. Over 13,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below. Can a powerful story really compensate for lower stats? Yes, absolutely. After reading thousands of applications, the one X factor for every pre-med is their story. How did you come to medicine? How did you develop that interest in underserved populations or infectious disease or public policy? Our student Jill is an excellent example. Growing up, she had a sister with autism and she realized that people treated her differently and felt like that wasn't fair. Her application is centered all around neurodivergent populations. One of her activities was building a museum accessibility program so that people like her sister could enjoy art in a safe, comforting way. Remember that most adcoms have practiced medicine. They have met thousands of other doctors and colleagues and see how an early interest in underserved populations becomes a career as a medical director at a federally qualified health center. And so medical schools are looking for those stories. They help us understand why you'll become a great doctor and get a sense of what impact you'll make in the world. Oh, and if you want a bonus, pair a powerful story with great stats. And then you become like our student Betty, 12 interviews, 
five acceptances. Full ride scholarship to Kaiser, hundreds of thousands of dollars of merit-based and financial aid to UCSF and UC San Diego. Stories make you memorable. And if your story aligns with the school's mission statements, then it's a match made in heaven. And that actually brings us to the most misunderstood part of the process. How do schools actually assess fit and mission alignment? Every medical school is in the business of training great clinical doctors. That's the foundation. And on top of that, they may have other priorities. Stanford, for example, has a reputation of graduating experts in health tech or health entrepreneurship. UC Davis covers a huge underserved rural, urban, suburban community in Northern California. And so their curriculum and their student body is dedicated to serving that community best. Boston University emphasizes social justice. And in fact, in my interview with Dean Dr. Goodell, she says that if social justice isn't that important to you, then Boston probably isn't the greatest place for you to train. What ultimately matters is how clear your application is. The most successful pre-meds I've worked with demonstrate authentic, coherent application themes throughout. Our student Sally, for example, her basic science research is in T cells fighting HIV. And her community service experience involves partnering with the Department of Public Health to pass out hundreds of HIV self-test kits. And she also spent a summer abroad in a clinic specializing in tropical infectious diseases. The theme is clear as day. And if your themes and your interests fit a medical school's mission statement, that is what they consider fits. And that is mission alignment. The one takeaway I hope you don't misunderstand is that none of this can be engineered. It must start with what you genuinely care about. What's something med schools don't actually care about as much as pre-meds think? Being unique. When most pre-meds hear that they need to stand out, they think that that means they should be unique. And interestingly, what I've learned is you can stand out without being unique. And you can also be unique and not stand out. Those are two different things. For example, I met a candidate who talked about her charcuterie board business. It was extremely unique. In fact, I had never heard it before. And I was so excited. I asked if I could buy a board so that my partner and I could have a little picnic date. I felt like it was a cool thing to support her business and I love charcuterie. But it turns out that the business hasn't really started in the last six months. And there's really just an Instagram account with one or two posts and the website is down for whatever reason. Yeah, basically it was extremely unique and extremely not impactful. There was nothing really done quite yet. And on the other hand, we talked about Sally earlier. She works with people experiencing homelessness. That is super not unique. I bet you can think about five pre-meds off the top of your head that work with homeless people. But because she partnered with the Department of Public Health to pass out hundreds of self-test kits, thousands of fentanyl test strips and naloxone care packages, her basic science projects are published in big name journals. And she started a survey project where she interviewed 125 homeless people about their experiences with street medicine, and then took her findings, published those reports, and is meeting with the mayor to talk about opportunities to support homeless people. That stands out without being unique. The subject matter, working with people experiencing homelessness, you've seen that before, but the excellence the level of impact, you have not seen that very often. And that's what stands out and makes you competitive. Med schools honestly have seen everything under the sun. So the secret to standing out is not necessarily being unique. You become competitive and you stand out when your excellence and your impact and your results speak for you. Oh, and if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, it would be an honor to support you. We have the bandwidth to support only four students per month, and that's how 100% of our pre-meds who have applied on time have gotten into medical school. Click the application cycle advising link down below to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Who is the admissions process secretly designed to filter out? This is my favorite question, especially because I work with so many doctors now. I understand how admissions process eventually play out years and decades later. Medical school admissions secretly filters out pre-meds who are not self-aware. There's a little test that we run with all our students. The question is, if I were on call and I needed help at 3 a.m., how would I feel if this pre-med were my backup? And it's such a great telling gut check. 
It helps us understand if the pre-med is mature enough and it isolates the pre-med outside of the extracurriculars, outside of the letters recommendations. It hones in on this person's character. And truthfully, you might ask, how in the world do I know a person from what they write on a medical school application? And honestly, I found that it's actually really hard to hide who you are on paper. And it goes both ways. On one end, I commonly see pre-meds who write in a way where doctors are the greatest thing in the world and they save lives on the daily. And there is no better adrenaline than curing disease. And that's probably someone who is not going to do well when they meet their first patient in the emergency department who does not care about them, is ungrateful for their care, and spits and curses at them. On the other end, I literally reviewed a pre-meds application this morning who spent every summer growing up on their parents' pear farm. They were trucking 40 pound bags of pears in and out of the field for 12 hours, seven days a week. That's someone who will work 80 to 100 hours a week in residency and feel totally comfortable. Being a doctor today is not a perfect job. It's one where you need to work well in teams and you have to be okay with patients who don't trust the system or who don't trust you and think you're incompetent and garbage. And secretly, I think medical school admissions filter out students who are not self-aware enough to be able to stand this reality. Last, but certainly not least, what's a piece of conventional pre-med advice that actually backfires? Become a scribe, an EMT, or a medical assistant. What ends up happening is you spend six months and $3,000 in training. And then you get everything you need in the first 300 hours working the job. And then you get used to it and end up spending 2,000 more hours doing nothing really else for your application. And on your written application, you spend all the time on that one dramatic emergent story. But the truth is, is that medical school doesn't expect you to know what a pneumothorax is or the mechanism of action for epinephrine. Medical school is supposed to teach you that. In fact, they know they can teach you medicine. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. And so I find that being an EMT scribe or medical assistant can actually hurt a lot of pre-meds more than it can help them. It is great for foundational clinical experience, but it cannot be your entire application. And worse yet, it cannot be your entire personality. Remember that these experiences are generic. They are often one size fit all. And so it's hard to really understand you, your passions, or why you entered medicine from these generic clinical experiences. Good grades and becoming a scribe is the modern day cookie cutter formula for a generic application. Feel free to start there, but make a conscious decision to move past that. If you like this video, you'll love the one where I share the 10 harsh truths I wish I knew when I was a pre that video is here. Thanks for watching.